welcome back to Friday Briefing. Thank you very much for staying with us. We'll continue with the show. And as you know, it is now time to learn some proper English pronunciations. I'll bring in Willis, the word master. Willis, it's great to see you. Hope you're doing well this uh, evening. So, Willis, I want us to start with word on the street. Let's just listen in to that and then we come back. Boganiferia, Boganiferia, Boganiferia. 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 Boganivili, Boganivili, Boganivili. Boganivilia, Boganivilia, Boganivilia. Boganivilia, Boganivilia, Boganivilia. Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. All right, so Kayans are trying to pronounce this word. Willis, I'll hand it over to you. But of course, first things first, how do we go about this Bougainvillea? Bougainvillea, Willis. How do we go about it, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> well, but in the first place, I'm doing fine. Um, just enjoying the match that you've been doing since you started tonight's Friday briefing. And that is a wonderful work, Betty. That atmosphere, I just feel like I should have also been uh, to that place. But you never know. One day, one time, things will happen like that. Now, straight to that word on the street. It's a tricky one because of the many letters and the correct or acceptable pronunciation of that word is bougainvillea, bougainvillea. So you can also say bougain, but bougainvillea is the right pronunciation for that word. Remember, that is a tropical climbing plant with red, purple, or white flowers, and you say bougainvillea. So those who talked of bo, it's bu. You begin with the sounding boo. And to our dear viewers, that is those who are watching KTN News at this moment, I would say that it's great to always have you on board when it comes to the acceptable or accurate pronunciation of English words, because whenever one would be good at pronouncing words, good at grammar, and good at the choice of words, or you may talk about vocabulary you'd be very sure of having effective expression or communication of intended messages in any communication itself. When you're talking to people, you'd deliver the intended messages in a very clear and in a very effective way. So now that my cameraman and prompter, Nicholas Mburu, has already managed to get me the list that is showing from your end before I can get straight later to the feedback questions, I'll go through the words one by one. And the first word from what I already have here is right on your screen. And this word, remember, it's another word for merry-go-round or the moving belt from which people collect their bags at an airport. That moving belt or it's also another word for merry-go-round. But the pronunciation is carousel. You say carousel. So avoid carousel, carousel, say carousel. So that is the acceptable pronunciation of that word. Remember I've said it's referring to merry-go-round or that moving belt from which people collect their bags at an airport. Now, the next word that we have for our viewers tonight is also ready with me. That is recision. You say recision. Don't say recision, recision, and all that. Avoid such pronunciations. The accurate pronunciation of this word is recision, recision. And remember, it refers to the act of cancelling or ending a law an order or an agreement, and that is where you can also remember the other word that we once tackled on KTN News and during this same, same segment that is rescind. Rescind is a verb. Don't say resigned. Resigned, you say rescind. But the word here is rescission. 
So you must or you should always get it right, especially if you are in a career of serious communication. Our next word, it may be a bit easy, and thank you, Muru, for making them clear enough. You say excavator, an excavator. But remember, you can also say an excavator. Ik or ek. Excavator, excavator. But remember, for those who also want to know the meaning, that word refers to the large machine that is used for digging or moving earth. Excavator or excavator. Now, the next word, it may not be very common to many people, but remember, it's about, uh, you know, some of these words. Some of these words, some could be common or they are commonly used, but there are some which may be rare. From what I've seen Nicholas Muru getting me right here, maybe you can try as our dear viewer. Can you try it at home? Just one second for you to try it. Well, if you have said treadle, then you didn't get it. If you said treadle, avoid that. This word is pronounced as treadle. Treadle. That A is silent. If you can remember a word like bread or breast, there is an A, but you don't pronounce it. You say bread, not breed. You say breast, not breast. And you also say treadle. And a treadle is uh, that device uh, worked by the foot to operate a machine, like those who know a sewing machine. Don't say sewing or sewing. It is a sewing machine. The device that is worked by the foot on a sewing machine is called a treadle. Treadle. So don't say treadle, don't say triadle, and any other pronunciation. The next word that I'm having right here is also having many letters, but it's pronounceable. Can you try it? Good. If you've tried it at home and you've got it, that is very good of you. But let me tell you how this word is pronounced so that you can judge whether you are right or wrong. You say scrumptious, scrumptious. Remember, when you talk about something that is, it is scrumptious, remember that is an adjective, it means it's tasting very good or delicious, delicious. Tasting very good or it's delicious. That is the word scrumptious. Scrumptious. Don't say scrumptious. Don't say any other thing that is not what is the pronunciation of this word. But as I always say, nobody is perfect. You see, many people learn English as a target language, a second language. So if you're not a native speaker of English, you may find it sometimes difficult to pronounce certain words correctly. We have the tricky words, but we also have words which are very complex for different reasons or factors that would be at play. But you have to get it right, especially if you're in a career of serious communication for you to communicate effectively or clearly. The next word is a bit difficult. It's tricky. C-O-U-C-H-E-T-T-E. -E. That is a narrow bed on a train that falls down from the wall. That narrow bed on a train that falls down from the wall. Don't say cochette. Don't say coquette. It's couchette. You say ku then you have the primary stress on the second syllable, and that is shed. So the correct or acceptable pronunciation of this word is kushet, kushet. Tricky, but manageable. Now, we go or we get to the next word, and the next word uh, that I have right here for you, our dear viewers, is tricky. It is a medical term, and it refers to Infection of blood by harmful bacteria. You say bacteria, not bacteria, as commonly said locally. Bacteria. A medical term, and it refers to infection of blood by harmful bacteria. You don't say toxamia. Don't say toxemia. That A and E, 
the two letters, that is A and E, in the middle of this word, they combine and represent the long vowel sound E. So you say toxemia, toxemia. And from that point, I would go straight now to the feedback questions. And the main feedback question for tonight is from one lady by the name Debbie Awino of Nairobi. Debbie wants to know whether we say sincerity or sincerity, we don't say either of the two pronunciations. You don't use them. This word is from the adjective sincere, to be sincere. Then you say sincerity, sincerity. Don't say sincerity, sincerity. The correct pronunciation of that word is sincerity from sincere. Just like we have the word severe, which is also an adjective. Don't say severity, severity, you say severity. So the two words, one, sincerity, two, severity. Thank you so much, Debbie Awin of Nairobi. Silas Njoguna of Kiambu, you say infectious, infectious. And thank you for praising Friday Briefing and Mind Your Language. And many people I know you'd like to call it Mind Your Pronunciations. The moment you pronounce words correctly in any language on earth, you'd be communicating very clearly and very effectively in terms of expression. Dr. Henry Onderi of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga University, Kisi Campus. This is where I love Friday Briefing because it's for almost every person or everybody in the society. Dr. Henry Onderi of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga University, Kisi Campus, and Eda Nyabuto. We also value you so much because such kind of brains in our society would always help us to achieve whatever we want. Remember, such aspects like industrialization and all that. We need brains such as yours, or yours if you like. But you pronounce that word as director. Director. You can also say da. Director or director. Ahmed Guhad of Garissa. Hubris. Hubris. Wafula Makoha of Kakamega. You say an ogre. An ogre. Don't say ogre. The problem with some English words, when you look at them, you'd pronounce them as if they have phonetic spelling. A word that has phonetic spelling or a language that has phonetic spelling is a language where you find the words are pronounced the way they are spelt, following the letter sequences. But this word is not pronounced as ogre. You say an ogre. Ogre. You also say an ochre. You don't say okre or ochre. Avoid that. Wafula Makoha. We also thank you so much. Ronald Mayaka, this must be, oh, this is that senior reporter with the Scholar newspaper. Loving Friday Briefing is great. As a journalist, we also value you so much, Ronald Mayaka. But you say executive or executive. Your first word, you say executive. You can also pronounce it as executive. Then the second word, you say facade. Facade. Don't say facade. Facade. No. Facade. A facade. Remember one time I talked about charade. Don't say charade. Don't say charade. Charade. You say charade. Tom O'Willy of Homer Bay, you say hyacinth. Hyacinth. Don't say hyacinth. Water. Hyacinth. Mary Rono of Eldoret. You say panache, panache. Don't say panache, and don't say panaki. It's panache. Then Lennox Combo of Kilifi, sour. This word is very popular on Mind Your Language. You say sour, S-O-U-R, sour. Sour milk. Faith Omwanza of Otamba Girls School, you say hemoglobin, hemoglobin. In that word, A and E also combine to form or they represent the long vowel sound E, hemoglobin. So faith on ones of Otamba girls, secondary school, there you are, or that is the way to pronounce that word. Joe Moonde Ogeto, also of Jaramogi. 
Uh, Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, you are having a field day with us uh, for today. And Joe Maunde Ogeto of Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga University, you say cautionary. Cautionary. From that point, I would now take you to the word that I have for you tonight as a surprise or the surprise word. The surprise word for tonight, it's not common, but it's a word that is commonly used in law. And it refers to a written order to attend court to give evidence. A written order to attend court to give evidence. And I believe this one will be very, very interesting to most of our lawyers. They are doing a wonderful work in this country. And you say, sapina. Don't say sabpoena. Sabpoena, sapoena, no. You say sapina. And looking at the phonetic transcription that I've given below, you realize that you say sa, then we have that mark. That mark shows that you have a primary stress. Then you say pina, sapina. Sapina. That is a written order to attend court to give evidence. Finally, we have the confusing words. And this is where I believe the viewers of KTN News also, they benefit a lot, if I'm not wrong. The first word, that is the upper word, many people find themselves mispronouncing it as wary, which is wrong. You say wary, wary. And you can see the phonetic transcription that I've given there, wary. Be wary of this, wary. That is the upper word. The one in the middle, you say Weary. It is the word that many people find themselves pronouncing or mispronouncing as weary because of what we see. But you say weary. If you can understand the international phonetic alphabet, that is the IPA, with which I've now transcribed the word to guide you in terms of pronunciation, you can realize that you say weary, not weary. Then the word below, that is the lower word, you say worry. Worry. So when you see this symbol, this symbol which is the inverted V, it tells you about what we call the mid-central vowel sound, uh, worry, worry. Just like son, my son, that sound, uh, is a mid-central sound, and it's different from when somebody talks about tap, T-A-P, tap. That sound, uh, is what we call now the open or low front sound ah. Uh. So some of these aspects are very crucial or very important for you to understand if you want to get the pronunciations right. Otherwise, from this end, that is from Kisumu, that is all that I had for you for tonight. I have to take you back to Betty, and one thing that I would assure you, if you keep it KTN News and you keep it KTN Home, you just have a lot to always Marvel at as a viewer of television. Back to you, Betty, from this end. Right, thank you so much, Willis. For the lesson tonight, our communication, of course, was not as normal, but it's okay. You did it so, so well, Willis, and it's good always to hear from you. Remember, you can always uh, follow him at Willis Cheng Wan. That's his Twitter handle. And uh, that segment, Mind Your Language, one of your favorites here on Friday Briefing, is uh, what brings us to the end of the show tonight. Um, so, of course, as you know, it, we're coming to you live from the Moy Sports Center, Casa Rani. We've been having the uh, Safaricom International Jazz Festival here tonight. We've had a VIP show, which is currently ongoing um, the the band of the night BWB has not yet gone live and so we're waiting for that um, but yeah thank you so much for watching remember that um, Safaricom is marking five years since uh, the uh, jazz festival began and therefore really a big milestone for them my name is Bessie Kalo we'll see you again next week till then be blessed have a great night uh, be kind to one another and uh, be safe all right let's now leave you with some pictures from uh, the concert <laughs>